Hello, it's The Ghost. Welcome to A Stranger World Than Fiction, where we are taking a look at what's all going on out there, the oddities, the strange that others are claiming to be true. And today's is a question, really. No matter how much evidence there seems to be or experiences that are shared, would any of it push you enough to allow you to believe in reincarnation? Is reincarnation even an option for you? Or is it something that you're choosing, with or without good reason, to not believe in? Take a listen to this and think again about reincarnation and share your thoughts on what you think of the topic. Okay, we're going to take a look at this post by the Freedom Articles. And this was put up in August of 2021, so very recent. And it says there's definite evidence and maybe even proof of reincarnation. So here, it's our job to take a look at what they've put up and decide for ourselves if it's enough for us to be pulled into this belief. Maybe we believe it already. All right, let's see what they have to say. Reincarnation is frequently rejected as impossible by those who worship at the altar of rational materialism and mainstream science. Yet for those with an open mind who realize that logic and reason cannot possibly grasp and account for all of the phenomena existing in the universe, it is amusing to see how perplexed those with scientific minds are when presented with information which is beyond rational explanation. And that's really a lot of what we're talking about here, isn't it? Beliefs in reincarnation have been around a long time. Reincarnation is still widely regarded as real in Tibetan Buddhism and Hinduism. And even the Catholic Church held reincarnation as true before the 4th century AD. Evidence of reincarnation? Well, reincarnation researchers such as Dr. Ian Stevenson who took on 3,000 cases, and Carol Bowman, 1,000 cases, have collected impressive, at the very least, evidence of reincarnation, if not outright proof of reincarnation, by compiling thousands of cases of children who have demonstrated accurate past life recall. The accounts are truly incredible. Many of them have similar themes, such as children being able to fluently speak other languages, which they never learned in this life, and describing how they died in graphic detail. In some cases, their stories can be proven in black and white. Some children even remember the military colleagues they served with, whose names match those on veterans' lists. And the Freedom Articles gives us three case studies. First one, Cameron McCauley. Cameron McCauley's case is quite startling. Cameron was born in Glasgow, Scotland, to his mother, Norma. Ever since he was two years old and first started talking, Cameron told his parents, relatives, friends, and neighbors, anyone who would listen, the story of his other life in Barra, a tiny island in the northwest of Scotland. At first, his mother just thought he was making it all up, but as Cameron got older, the story didn't change, and he was able to fill it in with more detail. He talked about living in a white house with three toilets, seeing airplanes fly out of his window, and having a mother with long brown hair. Cameron even described the way his father died while crossing the road. He didn't look both ways, he said. The weird thing was that Norma had never been to Barra. Cameron's desire to visit Barra and to see his former mother grew more and more persistent. One day, he even told Norma that he wanted his Barra mum, and not her to pick him up from kindergarten or school. Eventually, the family went to Barra and found the White House just as Cameron described it. Cameron's case is impressive evidence for reincarnation and past life recall. What makes the whole thing especially fascinating is that he actually described the way in which he left his old family and was born into this new one. It appears as if he found some kind of magic portal that transported him through space and time, out of one body and into the body of a fetus in his new mother's womb. Norma asked him, how did you get here to me? And Cameron replied, I fell through and went into your tummy. Interesting case. Is that enough to make you believe? Let's try case number two, James Leininger. 
The story of James Leininger is no less amazing. At the age of two, James started telling his parents stories of not being able to escape from something. He was having nightmares about it. His parents, Andrea and Bruce Leininger, tell the story in his book, Soul Survivor, the reincarnation of a World War II fighter pilot. What made James' parents take him more seriously was when James produced three pieces of information which could be verified. The name of the boat he flew his final mission from, the name of another pilot he flew with, and the name of the place where he died. Although just a toddler, James drew numerous pictures of planes being gunned down in flames, signing his names as James Three. When his parents asked why he was putting a three after his name, he replied that he was the third James. Bruce called a veterans organization to check James' information, and it checked out. They were able to verify everything, he said. James went on to divulge various names of World War II fighter pilots and more. Eventually, after years of research, Bruce and Andrea tracked down the family of James Houston, who was indeed killed in a plane crash while on a mission near Japan, which is what the boys said. Let's take case number three, Shanti Devi. This case happened in the 1930s. Shanti Devi was born in India in 1926, and like many of these cases, started speaking about a previous life in great and vivid detail at the age of four. She kept going on about her previous husband, son, and a house which she said was located in another state in a village called Mathura. By this time, Shanti Devi was six years old, and her parents were perplexed and worried about such statements. The girl even gave a detailed account of her death following childbirth. They consulted their family physician, who was amazed how a little girl narrated so many details of the complicated surgical procedures. As the girl grew older, she persisted in asking her parents to be taken to Mathura. A meeting with Kanjamal was arranged, during which Shanti Devi recognized him as her husband's cousin. She gave some details about her house in Mathura and informed him of the location where she had buried some money. Kanjamal was so impressed that when he went to Mathura to persuade Kendernat to visit Delhi, that was her husband, he came to Delhi on November 12, 1935, with her son from her previous life and his present wife. After trying to test her and trick her about who her husband's brother was, she replied, No, he is not my husband's brother. He is my husband himself. And then she addressed her mother. Didn't I tell you that he's fair and that he has a wart on the left side of his cheek near his ear? Not surprisingly, Shanti was emotionally overwhelmed on seeing her son from her previous life. Tears welled in her eyes when she hugged him. She asked her mother to bring all her toys and give them to her son, but she was too excited to wait for her mother to react and ran to bring them. Kendernat asked her how she had recognized her son when she'd only seen him once as an infant before she died. Shanti explained that her son was a part of her soul, and the soul is able to easily recognize this fact. And there we have three pretty famous examples. You can find them on the internet. The article continues to say, Reincarnation is still one of life's grand mysteries, and while we gather more information about it, we must remain open to many possible explanations for it if we are genuinely interested in discovering the true nature of reality. And that sort of sums up the possibilities, doesn't it? Either you can choose not to believe because reincarnation sounds completely out there and ridiculous to you, Or maybe you know someone that is claiming they are reincarnated, or you might think you are yourself. That's option two. And option three is you don't really know anything about it, but you are willing to be open to the idea because anything's possible. I, of course, am of the anything is possible type. I've had experience with those claiming to be reincarnated. I have had jobs trying to work out solutions for those that have been reincarnated. But I'm curious what you guys think. Out there in the world on the everyday, is reincarnation something you consider? Or does it just sound like a concept that's completely ridiculous to you? 
or does it freak you out so much that you just don't want to think about it at all? Share your thoughts. And thank you for listening today. And I will talk to you all soon.